channel so in today's session let us see a few more c programming interview questions so coming to the first one it's a small program logical program so here one variable is declared and initialize it to zero and one condition is given if condition i is equal to is equal to zero print f hello break and the options will be hello nothing will be printed compiler error and none of the above Right? So if you watch carefully here, see, uh, uh, most of the people will go for this option here because here i is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to 0 is true. As it is true, hello will be printed and a break. So the control will come out from the loop. But here, the answer is compiler error because this break statement can be used only in iterative statements. Right? So this break statement should be used in only iterative statements. But here, there is no iterative statement. So there is no for loop or while or do while. Right? So it is used only in conditional statement which is not supported. So it will return a compiler error right so watch carefully whether the break is included in the iterative statement or a conditional statement so if it is included in iterative statement then you can trace the logic if it is included in only the condition statement without any iterative loops then simply you can go for compiler error right let us move on to the next question see we will move on to the next question this is also a simple program so here so a variable is initialized to 0 i and here we are using one iterative statements so do y in that we are incrementing the i and we are checking the condition i is equal to is equal to 2 then continue print the statement next while close and now so most of the people will go for this while loop because here first i is equal to 0 next i plus plus so if it is i plus plus that is nothing but 1 so 1 is equal to is equal to 2 it's a false then right uh, automatically i less than 2 1 less than 2 it go for next right next i plus plus next 2 2 is equal to 2 continue so it, as it is continued then it will skip to the next one See, actually here we are not included any braces in this field, right? So if you are not included any curly brace, that means only one statement belongs to that particular block, right? So here this printf statement is outside the conditional statement. So this is outside the conditional statement. So, irrespective of the condition, this will be executed every time. See, first i is equal to 0. Then, enter into the loop. So, i plus plus. So, i is equal to 1. 1 is equal to is equal to 2. False. So, it will come out from the conditional block. So, here it ends the conditional block here itself. So, while loop will be printed here while loop will be printed here next one less than two right one less than two condition is true again move on to here now i plus plus i is equal to sorry two i is equal to two two is equal to is equal to two condition is true so continue so if it is continue automatically the continue statement means it will skip the current iteration it will move on to the next iterations so Whatever the information or whatever the statements we are writing after this continue, it, all the statements will be ignored and it will directly skip to the next iteration. So it will check the condition. So 2 less than 2. It's false. So come out from the loop. So this is the statement written out of the loop. So print a percentage d i. So what is the i value? 2. 2 will be printed. So this is the answer. Y loop 2. 
Hope you understood this one, right? So if we are not writing these curly braces, it implies the block consists of single statement. So whatever it may be conditional statements or any iterative statements, if that block consists of only one statement, we need not include the curly braces. So directly we can write the single statement which to be executed. So hope you understood this one. So we have to take care about these curly braces also. Right. So in order to get confused, they will form this indentation. Right. So these two are in same indentation so that it will, it will confuse the uh, user to misguide the output. Okay. So hope you understood this one. Let us move on to the third question. See, we will move on to the next third question. So here in the main function, the variable is initialized to zero and in the for loop only two statements are there. One is the condition, another one is the increment. Right. So printf hello. So most of the people will go for this answer because we know that iterative in iterative statements the loop variable we know that in any iterative statement there must be a loop variable initialization next condition and updation so these three should be included in iterative statements and this loop variable initialization can be outside the loop outside the for loop right so for initialization condition updation so this is the syntax for for loop we can use this initialization outside the for loop also so in this in that case <coughs> most of the users will get confused and go for this answer hello 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 because k is equal to 0 less than 3 k plus plus so 3 times this loop will be iterated so this will be printed 3 times but actually here even though you are initializing any variable the loop variable outside the for loop you have to include semicolon here that means every for loop should have two semicolons it will count for that okay so here if this gives a compiler error okay this gives a compiler error because here there is only one semicolon so if this for loop is written as for semicolon k less than 3 k plus plus this is the correct one and this answer will be printed because semicolon it's a empty thing right so instead of initializing k value here, we are initializing outside. But we have to place this semicolon here. So here that semicolon is not placed. Okay. So that's why we will get the compiler error. Hope you understood. So this is the syntax for the for loop initialization condition updation. We can write this initialization outside the condition outside or updation outside. But this format, in this format, the for loop should be written in our program. So, which is not equal here, right? Hope you understood this one. So, this answer is compiler error. So, let us move on to the next question. Right. So, see the next question. So, here x, y, z, three variables are declared and one variable is initialized. The sum x is equal to 4. And the second statement, we are, initialized, we are decrementing the x value and that value is assigned to y. In the next statement, we are decrementing the x value and it is assigned to z. Now, in the last one, we are printing all the three values, x, y and z values. See, coming to first statement, x equal to 4. Coming to the second statement, y is equal to minus minus x. So, we know that x plus plus is equal to, I mean, this means x is equal to x plus 1. Similarly, x minus minus is x is equal to x minus 1. So, decremented the x value and it will be assigned to the x value itself. Right. So, this statement we are writing as increment and decrement operators. And plus plus x means pre-increment. That means the first, the, uh, the 
value of x will be incremented first and uh, minus minus x means first it will be decremented and post means first the value will be used in the expression and then the value will be updated that means incremented value will be updated now here the second statement y is equal to minus minus x it is a pre-increment sorry pre-decrement pre-decrement so y is equal to value is updated so 3 will be assigned to yeah y next z is equal to x minus minus now as we are decrementing the x value is 3 now right here we have decremented now z is equal to x minus minus as it is a post decrement post decrement first the value will be assigned to the expression and the value will be updated so first 3 will be assigned to z and then x will be updated so decremented to 2 so in the last line we are printing x y z so the answer is 2 3 3 so most will get confused and they will write it as 4 3 3 here x is decrementing so it is decrementing means it is again updating its own value so once it is decremented the decremented value will be updated so this is the answer hope you understood this one so in the first first step y is equal to minus minus x pre decrement is so x will be decremented so x will be moved to 3 and it will be assigned to y decremented to 3 and it will be assigned to y in the next post to decrement first value will be assigned to z and then decremented so 2 so the value is 2 3 and 3 hope you understood this one let us move on to the next one right so let us see the next question so simple here three variables are initialized a b c a to for a, a for a 10 value is initialized for b 20 c 30 now coming to this statement a is equal to b double is equal to c so how it is evaluated we know that here it is an assignment operator this is the so this is the assignment operator and this is the relational operator <coughs> so this is just like a is equal to some b plus c so if any expression is in this form assignment operator first this will be evaluated and this will be assigned to a okay so similarly here also first b is equal to is equal to c will be evaluated and it will be assigned to yeah. here if double is equal to here double is equal to is relational operator so the output of the relational operator will be either 0 or 1 true or false right so here b value is 20 is equal to is equal to c value is 30 so is it true 2 is 20 is equal to is equal to 30 so it is false so it will return 0 so the output of this statement is 0 so 0 will be assigned to a okay 0 will be assigned to a so in the next statement we are printing the a value which is nothing but 0 hope you understood this one so first this statement this is executed and the value the result will be assigned to variable a on the left hand side and then we here it is a relational operator the output will be either 0 or 1 here 20 is not equal to 30 so the condition is false so 0 will be written 0 will be assigned to a and if you print a 0 will be printed right so hope you understood uh, these questions so if you are having any doubts feel free to post your doubts in the comment section so that i will definitely try to clarify all your doubts if you really if you really understood my sessions like my sessions Share my sessions with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.